Welcome to lesson 11. In this lesson, we're going to finish up with chapter 3 by talking about the black code formatting tool. Now, in the last lesson, we learned a bunch of code style rules that we should generally follow. And although you should understand these formatting rules, black is a tool that can actually do this styling for you. So if you're working on a coding project with others, you can instantly settle many arguments over code style uh, or how to format code by just letting black decide. Now you can't change many of the rules that black follows, which is why it's described as the uncompromising code formatter. Indeed, the tool's name comes from Henry Ford's quote about the automobile color choices that he offered his customers. You can have it in any color you want as long as it's black. Now in the previous lesson I described a lot of the exact styles that black uses, but you can find the full black code style guide at this website. First, let's go into how to install black, and we can do that by opening up a command prompt or a terminal window on macOS and Linux, and then running the pip tool that comes with Python to install modules. In this case, we'll run pip install dash dash user black. Now on macOS and Linux, you'll want to run pip3 since pip is for Python 2. And if you get an error message about uh, pip is unable to be found, you could also just run the Python interpreter with the dash m command line argument, and then pass it the pip module right here, and then the install dash dash user black command line arguments after that. On macOS and Linux, you'll of course want to run Python 3, since Python is for Python 2. But either way, if you run this code, It'll look something like this. You can check that it successfully installed black. And you can also run the interactive shell and try to import black. And if you get no error message, you can see that it was installed correctly. Now you can also run black from the command prompt or the terminal window. Uh, in addition, your IDE or code editor can also run black in the background. Uh, you'll find instructions for getting Black to work with Jupyter Notebook, Visual Studio Code, PyCharm, and other editors at github.com slash psf slash black. But let's work on an example program. I have one here. It's a simple guess the number game. And I've put in a lot of weird spacing and styling that doesn't really follow the best practices. So I've saved this in yourscript.py. So let me just cd into the folder that has this program, and then I can either run the black tool directly and pass it the name of the file that I want it to work on. If that doesn't seem to work for you, you can also run Python or Python 3 on Mac OS and Linux and pass, pass it that dash m command line argument and say we want to run the black module and then pass this file name to black. Either way, it'll look something like this. Oh, oh, that's interesting. I guess it wasn't set up in my uh, path environment variable. I guess my path environment variable isn't set up correctly. That's okay. I'll just run this as a module. And it'll look something like this. Now, when I click over here back into Sublime Text, Sublime Text has noticed that this file has changed, so it automatically reloads the file. And you can see all of this text has now been automatically formatted. The actual behavior of this program is the exact same, but now the spacing follows best practices for code style. Now, if you want to learn a bit more about black, you can run it with the dash dash help command line argument. And that will display more options that you can pass to the black tool itself. And we'll cover a couple of these, notably the line length and also the skip string normalization command line arguments. Uh, these are shortened to with dash L and dash S. Now the standard line of Python code is 80 characters long. That's the standard limit for how long a line of code in Python should be, but that's just a style decision. Uh, it's mostly going back to when computer monitors generally only could display 80 columns 
which in turn comes from even older standards for punch cards. But here in the 21st century, we have high resolution screens and very wide displays, so we can actually go with a much longer line length, which is good because that keeps black from splitting up lines that are too long across multiple lines vertically, causing us to have to scroll up and down a lot. Now, black's default line length is 88 characters. However, we can change that by passing the dash L command line argument, along with a number for how many columns the uh, line length limit should be. I like to go with 120. So I make passing dash L 120 part of the standard way that I run black on my on my source code files. You can see if we set this to something very small, say 30 characters, you can see black will try to fit lines of code within this width limit by splitting it up across multiple lines vertically. But I think 120 is personal is a personal preference of mine, but I think it produces the best results for readability. Uh, next, black automatically changes any string literals in your code from using single quotes to double quotes, unless the string contains double quote characters in itself, in which case it uses single quotes. I'll give you an example. Here's a bunch of code. Here we have a string literal. This is a string value that literally appears in our source code, and this one has single quotes, this one has double quotes, this one has single quotes, but it contains an escaped single quote. Uh, this one contains single quotes, and it is a string value that includes double quote characters. Uh, this string literal uses double quotes, but it also contains that same string, except now it has to be escaped for the uh, double quotes. And then this is a single line string literal, but it uses the multi-line uh, string format with the uh, triple quotes. In this case, triple single quotes. I'm going to go ahead and save this and then run black over this. And you can see black has now changed this. I'm going to go ahead and put this inside of a diff program. Here's the original code. And let me copy and paste this over here and compare them. So this is the original code, and this is how Black has now formatted it. You can see Black automatically changes any single qu uh, quotes into double quotes. Uh, the same thing here when we have a single quoted string literal that contains single quotes, just changes that to double quotes. However, any double quoted string literals that contain double quotes, it's going to go ahead just to get rid of the escape characters. It's going to use single quotes for those string literals so that it doesn't need to escape the double quotes inside. And then here, even for the multi line strings that have triple quotes, it's going to prefer triple double quotes. That's kind of hard to say. It'll prefer triple double quotes instead of triple single quotes. Now, if you want black to just leave your string quotes alone, which is what I like to do because I generally like to use single quotes and I want to keep them as single quotes, you can add the dash s command line argument. If we look back to the help information, we can see that dash s is the shortened form. It's much easier to type than dash dash skip string normalization. And this tells black to not normalize the string quotes. And up here you can see we have the dash L, which is short for dash dash line length, and this is how many characters per line to allow. That's the line length limit. Now as great as black is, you might not want it to format some sections of your code. For example, I like to do my own special spacing whenever I'm lining up multiple related assignment statements. As in this example, I have a few more spaces here just so that all these equal signs are lined up. And I think this really improves the readability of this code. And in fact, I even add an extra space right here so that these multiplication operators are also lined up. It makes it a lot easier to see that 
uh, this is seconds per minute, and then seconds per hour is just 60 times the seconds per minute, and so on. However, if I run black on this code, black is going to see this as incorrect spacing, and it's going to change it to the standard one space before and after the assignment and multiplication operators. And even though this is technically correct, I don't want black to change my spacing. I'd much rather have it this way. So in order to tell black to not make this change, you can add comments inside your Python code that are directives to the black code formatting tool. You would just have a comment that says FMT for format, followed by a colon, and then the word off. And so this tells black, turn off code formatting for all the lines of code after this comment. And then if I want to turn it back on, I can say FMT colon on, and it will resume formatting code after this comment. So if I save this, and then I run black over this again, you can see that actually it's made no changes to this code whatsoever, because the only code that it would have formatted is uh, this one comment right here, which it doesn't have anything to change for. So it says one file left unchanged. I had something like this. Uh, you would see, well, it did uh, reformat this one file since it changed this. But as you can see, these lines of code have been left unchanged. And that's about it for code formatting. Now, although good formatting can be invisible, poor formatting can make reading your code very frustrating. Uh, style is something that's subjective, but the software development field generally agrees on what constitutes good and poor formatting, while still leaving some room for personal preference. And Python syntax makes it rather flexible when it comes to style. If you're writing code that nobody else will ever see, you can write it however you like. But much of software development is collaborative, whether you're working with others on a project or you simply want to ask more experienced developers to review your work, formatting your code to, uh, to fit the accepted style guides is important. Now, meanwhile, of course, formatting your code in an editor is a really boring, tedious task that you can automate with a tool like Black. So the last two lessons have covered several of the guidelines for good code style and also how to use the Black tool to automate formatting your source code to follow this style. But remember, there's more to code style than just spacing and deciding between single and double quotes. For example, choosing descriptive variable names is also a critical factor for code readability. And while automated tools like Black can make syntactic decisions, such as the amount of spacing that code should have, they can't really make semantic decisions, such as what is a good variable name. So that responsibility is yours, the programmers, and we'll discuss this topic in the next lesson.